Previously, we've shown how to build a control panel to control your lights during a live show. This tutorial explores some advanced options for control panels, buttons, and cues. Previously, we have seen how to edit the contents of a queue. Let's take a look at the other options in the inspector. These fields control how long it takes for a queue to fade in or out. You can set the default fade times for new queues in Lightkey's Preferences window. The priority determines what happens when multiple queues define the same fixture properties. Queues with a higher priority take precedence over others. If several queues have the same priority, the most recently activated queue takes precedence. The speed slider affects sequences and effects in the queue. For example, with a speed factor of 2, they run at twice their normal speed. You can also change the speed directly in the control panel. In the Button tab, you can choose between two types of buttons, push buttons and faders. With a push button, a queue is either active or inactive. A fader lets you control the queue's intensity between 0 and 100%, like on a traditional lighting console. The intensity determines to what degree a queue affects the DMX output. We'll see an example later. The color menu lets you change the appearance of the button. If you choose automatic, then Lightkey determines the color from the queue's contents. There are two different behaviors for push buttons. A toggle button is activated by a click and deactivated by another click. A flash button remains active only while the mouse button is pressed. Let's create an example for a fader button. This preset sets the dimmer to 100% and opens the shutter. Now we add some buttons which select different colors. We attach the buttons to each other so only one can be active. Note that these cues only define the color but not the dimmer. Now we can control the dimmer and color independently. Let's add another fader which sets the color to white. When we move the fader, we can blend between the selected color and white. But when we select a different color, our white fader is ignored. This happens because the last activated cue takes precedence, in this case, the color. To fix this, we increase the priority of the white cue. Now the white blends with whatever color is selected. Here's an example for the flash behavior. We add a push button which sets the dimmer to full and the color to white to get a blinder effect. We set the fade in time to zero so the blinder comes on immediately, but we keep the fade out time. Now when we press the button, the lights go to white at full intensity and then fade back to the last state. The flash button overrides the other cues because it's the most recently activated button. Finally, let's create a blackout button. Lightkey like doesn't have a built-in blackout button, but you can easily create your own. The blackout button simply closes the shutter.
We disable fading because the shutter property can't be faded. We also choose the highest priority so the button overrides all other cues. The blackout button blacks out all lights immediately. When we deactivate it, they return to their previous state. Let's continue our tour of the Q Inspector. In the Trigger tab, we can set up external triggers to control our queue. This can be a keyboard shortcut, a command from a DMX console, or a MIDI message from a connected MIDI controller. To create a keyboard trigger, we simply press a key while the queue inspector is open. It is a good idea to use a key combination that is not used elsewhere by light key. Now when we press Option B, the blackout queue is either activated or deactivated. We can do the same with a button on a MIDI controller. Some MIDI controllers support color feedback so the buttons light up in the same colors as the control panel buttons. When you assign a MIDI fader to a cue, the fader controls the cue's intensity, just like the fader buttons in the control panel do. The arrow next to a trigger takes us to the external control window, where more options are available. More about external control in another video. Let's look at the last two options. At startup tells Lightkey to activate the queue when you start the application or open the project. Before quitting activates the queue just before you quit Lightkey or close the project. This is useful for things like returning your moving lights to their home positions. You can also edit options for multiple cues at once. For example, let's set the fade times for all color cues to zero. The live view can have multiple pages. A page contains either a control panel or a queue list. Only one page can be active at a time, and only the active page contributes to the DMX output. For example, you could create control panels for different occasions or different users. To manage pages, click Live and select Manage Pages. Let's create a second control panel. To switch between the control panels, click Live. We can easily copy buttons from the first control panel to the new one, or to a queue list. We'll show you more about queue lists in the next video.